Have you ever heard of the term MSAFP? If you've ever been pregnant, it's probably something that was sent, and you may or may not have known that that lab was even sent. Did anyone even tell you what an MSAFP stood for? Well, it can be a super confusing topic to understand the information behind a maternal serum alpha fetoprotein, which is what MSAFP stands for. So today, we're going to talk about it. Welcome to the Dr. Lexi Show, where I take pregnancy topics and break them down into simple terms to help you advocate for yourself and your pregnancy. I'm Dr. Lexi, a board-certified OBGYN and maternal fetal medicine specialist, which just means a high-risk pregnancy doctor. And today we are talking about MSAFP. So we love to abbreviate things in the obstetrical world, and MSAFP is something that can be super confusing. So before we jump into it, I have to give you guys a couple of stories. And this is these are true stories. If you go into a device and you try to see how many times has someone asked me about an MSAFP, it actually comes up a lot. It's interesting. There was actually way back in the day, someone I trained with who became pregnant and had the question of via text, hey, I got an MSAFP sent and it was elevated. What does that mean? It, it's such a loaded question. So we are going to talk so much about it today, but I wanted to share with you a couple of things. So I got a message one time from the clinic I was working in. They're like, you have so many elevated MSAFPs today on your schedule. And those are consults. You should have a consultation with somebody, particularly a maternal fetal medicine specialist, which is what I do, so that someone can explain to you the results of the MSAFP which is likely sent by your OBGYN. Again, so many abbreviations. And what I do is MFM, maternal fetal medicine. So just throw another abbreviation in there. Um, Other people kind of asking in the past, well, we're doing an ultrasound. Well, what is the MSAFP for the patient? That's important. And this is one of my favorites too. And this was a while back, but it was an update from someone I was working with, a fellow physician. And the update is, hey, just an FYI, The patient that missed the appointment with you today, she missed it because she had an eclamptic seizure. So she was at home having a seizure and then got shipped into the hospital because she had this eclamptic seizure. And basically that means her blood pressures were really high and she had eclampsia. So preeclampsia is, this is, I'm getting into a whole nother topic. Eclampsia means thunderclap, pre means pre-thunderclap. So they found out that people who were having seizures which they called eclampsia, right? This thunderclap thing that was happening before they had seizures, they were noted to have high blood pressure and protein in the urine. That definition has completely evolved over time. But anyway, an eclamptic seizure is someone who has high blood pressure and likely protein in the urine. Maybe they didn't know it and now they're having a seizure. So we call that an eclamptic seizure or they have eclampsia. Anyway, lots of extra definitions. So this patient missed an appointment with me because they had an eclamptic seizure. So someone was updating me and saying, hey, this is why the patient's not there. And they also said, hey, and by the way, her history is she had an elevated MSAFP. That was it. So they brought that up because those two things can correlate. So today, like I mentioned, we are going to dive deeper into what is an MSAFP. All right, before we get started today, I want everyone to know that there are free downloads listed below where you can click on the links to get those. You can go to drlexihill.com backslash advocate to get your 13 questions to ask your OB provider. That's also down there as a link for you. And as we talk about things today, you'll hear me mention a couple of other either YouTube videos or downloads or links that you can get. You can find that below as well. But as always, anything can be found on my YouTube channel which hopefully you're watching right now. All right, so let's dive into this MSAFP. I like to start with expanding knowledge. So the first thing that helps me to explain this in the simplest terms is let's look at actually what those letters stand for. M, maternal. S, serum. A, alpha. And then F, fetoprotein. Okay, so let's slow all that down. Maternal serum alpha fetoprotein. So what is MSAFP in simplistic terms as best we can make it? It is a protein that is made by a couple of things during a pregnancy. It can be made by the yolk sac. It also can be made by the fetal liver and parts of the fetal 
gastrointestinal tract. So it's typically something that the fetus itself is making. So we now know the definition of MSAFP and basically how it is made or where it's made rather during a pregnancy. So now that we know that a fetus is making this alpha fetoprotein, right? That that's, that's the protein that we're monitoring. It can actually cross the placenta and get into the maternal bloodstream. That's where we would then ultimately draw a lab from the patient who's pregnant. And that's why we call that lab MSAFP, maternal serum alpha fetoprotein. Now that level of alpha fetoprotein that's being made inside the fetus it's typically being made around the liver, the gastrointestinal tract. When that goes into the maternal serum, you have to think about this because if you're measuring that level, we have cutoffs to say, yep, that's a normal amount that's kind of going across the placenta and getting into the mom's bloodstream versus, wow, that level is really, really high. That raises some concern. So that brings me into the kind of the second point and discussion of this is why is it important for us to check? an MSAFP during a pregnancy. Well, think about it. If there are things that are leaking or leaking is not really the right term. Actually, it kind of is. If you check the maternal serum level for this, right, and you're getting an MSAFP, if the fetus does have leaking is an okay word to use here, leakage of that into the amniotic cavity, and it's having some spillage over from being inside the fetus to the outside portion, like the amniotic fluid, there's gonna be more passage and things that are getting into the mom's bloodstream, and then the level can be higher. So in cases where there is something going on with the fetus itself, where there's an opening somewhere, maybe an opening of the anterior portion of the abdominal wall, maybe an opening of the brain where it's not covered appropriately, or maybe even an opening of the back part of the spine. Those are things that we call open defects. And these can cause, or you can see some of that, that field protein that's being made inside the fetus, it can leak some. And in those instances, the level in the mom's bloodstream is higher. And that's how a high level of an MSAFP can be indicative of something going on structurally with the fetus. So a little subset of the information I just shared. Anytime the MSAFP is elevated in a pregnancy, the first thing we wanna make sure to check on is getting an ultrasound done. So we can see if there are any structural abnormalities to the fetus. Now, thankfully, many times when I see someone with an elevated MSAFP, everything on the ultrasound looks fine. So I can say to them, man, everything with the skull, the brain looks good. The spine looks good. The abdominal wall looks good. Then the question naturally is, well, why is it elevated then? And this is where it gets kind of sticky and confusing. There are so many things in the literature that have been linked with an elevated MSAFP. You can look at things that might lead to or be like a, a predictor of things like preterm labor early ruptured membranes, even preeclampsia, elevated blood pressures or gestational high blood pressure, a type of elevated blood pressures in pregnancy too, that could occur later in the pregnancy. It also can be associated with growth restriction so that later in the pregnancy, maybe the baby's not going to grow to full potential. It can be associated with placental issues where you could end up having a placental abruption where that placenta doesn't really stay stuck to the uterine wall and kind of pulls apart a little bit. Finally, one of the big things is that it can be associated with stillbirth, which is as the pregnancy progresses down the road, the baby passes away, the heartbeat stops. And those things have an association with an elevated MSAFP. So how frustrating is it that one number can be associated with so many bad things, but not necessarily right now, meaning it could, not always, it could indicate that you may have an issue with one of those many things as the pregnancy progresses. It is so frustrating, right? So be prepared that when we get into our developing skills, we're gonna talk more about what can be done if the number is elevated and you have these possible risk factors as you progress in the pregnancy.
The final question I want to tackle here in our expanding knowledge portion is how exactly is an MSAFP sent? All right, this is really important. Kind of just two things to talk about here. Number one, it needs, it's just a blood draw, right? Just a blood draw. They usually get it from your little area right here inside the elbow bend, just a blood draw. Okay. That's, that's as much as it is. So don't be worried that it's any more invasive than that. And the second thing that's super, super important, the timing of this test is so key. There's a range. So you can have this blood draw done anywhere between 15 to 20 weeks. However, the sweet spot is right between 16 to 18 weeks. That's the perfect prime time to get it done. Remember, we discussed that this is something that is being created within the fetus. And so this level can change as the gestational age changes. And when we get to developing skills, we're going to talk about how important it is to know your due date when you're getting this MSAFP sent. All right, let's get into our developing skills and tackle a couple of questions. So first thing is the question that you really want to ask your provider. And that question is, when will we be sending my MSAFP? Now, recall that we talked about 15 to 20 weeks is the time to do it, but the sweet, sweet spot, 16 to 18 weeks. So you want to make sure early on that you're checking with them and that they are planning on sending that lab. All right. Now the MSAFP 16 to 18 weeks, that's your key time to have it drawn. All right, so make sure to ask that question. All right, the next skill that we want to develop is knowing to ask the question, what was my MSAFP? And if it is elevated, what are we going to do? It's kind of a two-part question there. But asking for the results is just important because you want to make sure before any lab is sent that you find out what's being sent and what it's testing for, and then follow up to make sure you got the results. The big question within this though is, is my MSAFP elevated? So remember the timing is so important. So if it comes back elevated, you wanna know the level of it. Most labs use 2.0, some will use 2.5. And the reason that cutoff changes is because some of the labs can be a little bit different. They all will report this in something called an MOM, multiples of the median. And the reason that they use that as a reporting system is because the level can change as the gestational age changes. And so that's why it's super important, again, to know your gestational age. So if the level is elevated, I want to jump into a little bit about what the plan would be. But remember, ask your provider and just make sure you guys talk together about what the plan would be. Now we talked about some of the risk factors, but before we talk about how we would address those, the main thing here, which I said I would talk about, is making sure that your due date is established and correct. Okay, you can go to a separate YouTube I have that's regarding what is my due date, it's the title of it, and it'll explain to you how we come about establishing a due date during a pregnancy. One of the most common reasons for an MSAFP being incorrect or elevated is that the due date that they gave to the lab was wrong. So if your due date is mixed up and that's why the MSAFP came back abnormal, that's fantastic. They just resubmit the proper due date to the lab and they'll come back at you with a new result. And hopefully when that result comes back, if the MSAFP level is normal, that's what the issue was. It was an error in how they either sent, wrote down or calculated your due date. So if you have an elevated MSAFP, do make sure to talk to your provider about your due date and make sure that number one, your due date's correct. And number two, that they wrote the proper due date down when they sent the lab to check your MSAFP. So a little bit more about if it legitimately is elevated, your due date's proper, all of that looked good. There are a couple of things that you need to make sure that happen. You need to make sure that you're seeing a maternal fetal medicine specialist, someone like myself, to go through the results with you and to make sure that you get a detailed anatomy ultrasound where they're looking at all the parts of the fetus from head to toe and really, really focusing on the abdominal wall the brain or the skull to make sure that the skull, the bony part is covering the brain and then the back part of the spine to make sure that the skin is covering the spine and that the spine looks to be intact all the way down. So those are some things that are important. The other things are that if that MSAFP is high enough, they might want you to do growth ultrasounds to check the growth of the fetus as your pregnancy progresses. And they might want you to do fetal monitoring, which is also called fetal well-being testing. Some of us call it antenatal testing or antepartum testing. There are a ton of different names for it. 
I have a separate YouTube on that to check out. It's titled fetal well-being testing. Like what is fetal well-being testing? And it goes into explaining the bits and pieces of that. But if your MSAFP is elevated enough, that may place you at a high enough risk where your provider says, hey, we need to monitor you more closely with fetal well-being testing. All right, and the final portion of everything I like to do about helping people understand items during their pregnancy is looking at how this impacts us. So the big thing here is the communication between you and your provider for you to be able to get that knowledge and develop the skills to ask the questions to them and really have a safe conversation to really understand what's going on in your pregnancy. The other thing too is having that ability to ask them when you're getting the MSAFP to make sure you're getting it at the right gestational age. And then if for any reason that number is elevated, making sure that you have the opportunity to talk to someone in that space like a high-risk pregnancy provider to discuss some reasons why an MSAFP can be elevated and then what the particular plan individualized for you is if indeed that MSAFP is elevated and your due date is correct. Quick fun fact as well, there is something called a quad screen. Obviously quad means four. Quad screen is made up of an alpha fetal protein, which is what we just spent time talking about, a beta HCG, an estriol, and an inhibit A, four different things. And these four different things can screen you for Down syndrome when they're done, particularly right around that 18 week mark, okay? Data has shown that if you have a quad screen, checking these four analytes is what we call them, the sensitivity for predicting Down syndrome is about 85%. There are tests now that are closer to 99% at predicting Down syndrome. Okay, so if you are pregnant and someone says, we're going to do a quad screen, inquire about a cell-free DNA screen instead. Some people call it non-invasive prenatal testing, but that test doesn't look at four different analytes. It looks at cell-free DNA. Whole separate UT on that. But make sure that if someone in your OB providers group says to you, we're going to do your Down syndrome screening, we're going to send a quad screen that you ask if you can actually do cell-free DNA screening instead, it is a better test. Also, anytime blood is sent, ask what's being sent because sometimes they're sending a quad screen and maybe you didn't know that. But it is kind of fun to know that of that quad screen, when you're looking at all of them, you can look at different trends. But the cool thing is the one that looks particularly for open neural tube defects, which is the thing that we talked about, like open things, like a spina bifida, which is an opening of the back, and encephaly, issues with the skull being open, or different abdominal wall defects, the MSAFP is still something that we utilize, not to screen for Down syndrome, but to screen for what we call open defects that could be affecting the structure of the baby or the way in which the body for the baby has formed. I hope that was a little bit helpful because it can be very confusing. All right, thank you guys for watching today. I hope I helped you to understand a little bit more about that value that's sent during your pregnancy called an MSAFP. And again, don't forget about the downloads that are below for you to get more information and the other YouTube videos, particularly on fetal well-being testing and the video that's on what is my due date so that you can understand how your due date is established during your pregnancy. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. And if there are any topics you'd like me to talk about in the future, leave those below and I'll work on getting videos for those to help you expand your knowledge, develop skills, and impact lives. All right, I am Dr. Lexi, and as always, wishing you a happy and healthy pregnancy.